Hello, everyone. Rob Wolf here from The Lone Factory, and you are listening to my podcast, The Lone Wolf Podcast, or you are watching me on my YouTube channel by the same name, The Lone Wolf Podcast. You can reach me at rob.wolf at lonefactory.com, or the best way is my cell phone, 727 366 5722. I'm in the ABC business, always be communicating. So you can get me after five o'clock and even on the weekends. I am a licensed loan officer in the sunshine state of Florida, where I live, Pennsylvania, where I grew up, and Colorado, where I vacation every year. This podcast is just me, but if you are in the real estate business, and it doesn't have to be just an agent, uh, you work for a title company, you're a contractor, you do handyman work for, for homes to fix them up. If you want to do a podcast with me, uh, we can do that, and then I'll give you a copy, and then you can you know, adver- uh, use it for advertisement on your own website. Uh, I keep these podcasts to 20 to 30 minutes. This one is probably going to push that 30-minute mark, and I put it out there Wednesdays at 9 o'clock. Now, if you miss an episode, uh, not live or whatever, no worries. Just go to Google Chrome and punch in the Lone Wolf Podcast. Now, loan is spelled L-O-A-N as in borrow money. Get it? Mortgage. Um, And then you'll be able to see not only this episode, but also past episodes. And uh, this episode, I saw an article with Zillow, 21 tips to save for a down payment. And honestly, I, I thought some of them were pretty ridiculous, and I'll go over them. But it made me think, okay, let's maybe think longer term than saving for a down payment in the next you know, year, two, or three. So I thought I want to do something on compound interest and how a little bit of money, if you're dedicated over the course of years, will pay dividends uh, down the road. And I'll, I'll go over that. Honestly, that's going to be the, my favorite part of this episode because uh, for those who don't know, I am fascinated with the securities industry and also numbers. And I'll show you not only how you can uh, invest with little money, uh, but then I'll I'll show you and I'll give you a copy of my my formula. (laughs) Okay. So let's go back to the Zillow article. The first thing they mentioned is wedding registry. Uh, Don't register uh, at a department store. Just tell your friends and family as a gift, just bring cash. I think that's been going around for years. And uh, the other side is what if you're not getting married? You're single or you already are married. (laughs) So uh, but I I think Zillow is just giving some ideas. Not all of these 21 items will fit. So the other one is uh, get a side hustle, a second job, part time job. I think that goes uh, without, uh, you know, much saying. The other one was commute to work. I think what they're getting at here is, do you have another way to get to work? Can you take public transportation, um, save on gas, I guess, Uh, carpool with somebody, maybe take your bike, walk. But that made me think, here in Florida, car insurance is through the roof. It reminds me when I lived in North Jersey. And besides car insurance, you've got a car payment. So between the two of them, it's not common, uncommon for people to spend $600 to $1,000 a month. So think of where you, where you live in an apartment, you know, whatever it may be. Are you close enough to your work that you can either take public transportation and you're also close to the necessities, you know, the grocery store and what have you? And would you be able to get by with just calling Uber to get you around? You know, so think about it. If you're spending, let's just say, $700 a month in in a car and car insurance, let alone gas and and other stuff, well, that's $20 a day. How much does it cost you to call Uber and to to take you around? So just just give that some thought. I I thought that was an interesting point. Uh, Wardrobe, downsize. Well, I think we all get carried away. Uh, Not all of us, but some people get carried away with buying clothes. Now, if you're buying clothes retail without on sale, well, I mean, that's a no brainer. But let me go one step further. 
Plato's is a fantastic way for you to get discounted. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, designer clothing, so to say. Let me take that another step further. Go to your thrift stores or Goodwill. Um, a lot of people donate clothing after only using it for a year or two. This blazer I'm wearing, I paid five dollars. Okay, uh, I'm not ashamed of saving money. So keep that in mind. Uh, refurbish slash resell. Just look around your house or your apartment. If you've got stuff that's collecting dust, put it on Facebook Marketplace. You don't have to pay eBay for anything, and you can you can sell the stuff. So uh, there, there's a little way to get some money. Buy used instead of new. I think that goes hand in hand. Um, don't buy what you want. Some of us get caught up in that stuff. Just buy what you need. Okay, even though it's a deal. Even though if you buy two, you get the third one at half price. You know, just, just think about that type of stuff. Uh, limit spending to cash. This is huge. I know Gordon Ramsay, not Gordon Ramsay, Dave Ramsay does that a lot. When you have cash in hand, you are less likely to purchase something. It's a psychological thing, whatever you want to do. I personally do. I have a credit card, but I only use it for instances where I have to use it. Like if there's something online I have to purchase or um, it's just more convenient. But for the most part, I give myself an allowance. That's my cash. That's all I use. Okay, so try to do that. Now, the next part, they say save credit card rewards. Well, I think for some, that's what got us here in the first place is spending the credit cards. I heard something that the average debt now with just credit cards, I think it's eight or nine thousand dollars. So I would get rid of your credit card. Don't get rid of them. Uh, don't close them out. That's going to affect your credit score. But you've got to find a way to not use that darn credit card. OK, um, so give that some thought. Cut down travel. Yes, that that can get expensive. Use high yield savings accounts. Well, you're not going to make a lot of money in a savings account. It's better than, you know, sitting in a, in a mattress, but savings account, they don't even keep up with interest. All right. So I'm going to talk about, you know, that's going to be part of my compound interest. Downsize your housing space. Well, I thought we we're trying to save for a house. So I don't quite understand what Zillow is saying there. Maybe they're talking about you've got a big apartment and downsize the apartment or the next item they talk about is get a roommate uh, to help out with the cost. So so maybe that's what they're talking about. Um, cancel subscriptions. That's a huge one. I think a lot of people are paying monthly fees on stuff that they can do without. Some of you may be paying for stuff you're not using. You don't even know you're paying for it. Um, the big one for me is cable. Take a look at your cable bill. A, do you need it? I cut my cable four years ago and I have a fire stick, uh, and I, I get the channels. Obviously I've got a, a, a modem in my house, but I cut cable. I don't miss it at all. So that's a big one. Check your, you know, are you going to the health club three, four times a week? Can you do the exercise in your house, your apartment? I, I know that the health club is good. It gives you a break. If you're in a small apartment, it, it does get you out of the apartment. Um, but if not, maybe that's something you consider. You know, check all the other monthly uh, things that you're paying for. You know, I don't pay for anything monthly anymore, but just, you know, maybe there's some warranty programs you're paying for. I, I don't know. Just just take a look at your credit card bill or your bank statement and look at all the monthly things that you're paying for. And you could probably save a, a, a boatload there. Uh, borrow from the local library. You know, they've got a huge resource of stuff you can use. But honestly, I don't know what you can't get on your phone that you could get at the library. Maybe they are assuming you don't have a, an iPhone or a Android, whatever it may be. Uh, cut your monthly cost. Well, yeah, I think that's a theme of this whole article here. So I don't quite understand what they're saying there. Uh, look for wallet friendly alternatives. And the other one is community resources. Look at those. So 
I think what they're looking, well, I, I know what they're talking about. Community resources, think of things that your community's offering for free. Like go to the park, okay? Go for walks there with your friends or activities, picnics with friends, family, that type of stuff. Get away from the entertainment, okay? I'll try not to rant too much. I probably have not been to a sporting event or concert in 10 plus years. And I don't miss it. I can't believe the price of tickets. And I can't believe the price of a hot dog and or beer and or soda, whatever it may be, and parking. It's ridiculous. So if you're still going to entertainment venues, I, th I think we got bigger fish to fry. If you're looking, if you, if you still don't know why you can't save, okay, it's ridiculous, the entertainment industry. Now, if you want to go, that's it. Okay. But you, we got to make choices here. So the other thing with friendly alternatives, and I'll kind of downsize because we all know going to sporting events is hundreds of, hundreds of dollars. Um, if you're going out to eat more than zero times a week, cut it out. Okay. Um, that's going to be part of my theme on my compound interest. But what I do once a month, once every two months at the most, I host a dinner party. I enjoy cooking. So I pick a theme and the girlfriend and I, we invite, you know, two or three couples. So there's about, you know, eight to 10 of us and I cook a nice meal. And they always ask, what can I bring some? I say, okay, bring a salad, one, bring a dessert or bring a bottle of wine. I don't want any guests spending more than $10. But the value we get out of that amongst being among friends, but also financially, let's face it. If you go out to a nice restaurant now, you're, you're not spending less than $100 between the meal and a couple glasses of wine. It's killing me. It's, it costs $9, $10 a glass of wine. I make wine, so I know how much it costs. That's as a hobby of mine. But anyway, um, find ways to, to get, you know, it's the way it was 30, 40, 50 years ago. Families got together, for, you know, uh, family and, and neighborhood, and, and you just a board game, Scrabble, whatever it may be. Think outside the box, you know, to save some money. Um, save your tax refund. I, I think that is kind of what we're trying to do, save money. So those are Zillow's 21 ideas. I don't think there's any surprise out here. Um, I, I think the big one and I, I've done a video on this, um, is what are you spending in entertainment, automobile, and food? And your automobile, I already touched on that. You, you might be able to get creative um, with the entertainment where I spoke about that. Now, food, I did a video on how you can eat comfortably for $50 a week. Now it's, it's, it's kind of bare minimum, but you can do it. Okay. Just, you got to cook yourself and not go out to eat. Now I hope that everyone listening to this, watching this is realizing every time you go out to eat, it's costing two or three times the amount that if you could do that at home, probably five times to be honest. Um, it, it's ridiculous to go out. Um, if you absolutely have to go out, no ifs, ands, or buts, then just go out and get some pizza and beer at the at the neighborhood pub. Uh, but again, we're trying to save money, okay? So keep that in mind. So I'm going to change screens, and we're going to talk about compound interest. For those that are unfamiliar with compound interest, if you collect interest off of an investment of, let's say, 10%, the first year, let's say you have $100, you would get $10 because 10% of $100 is $10. But now you have $110 for the second year, but then you also put another $100 in. So now you have 220 times 10%. Now it's $22.10. Okay. It's not $10 every single time. It starts compounding. Now you, in the beginning, you don't really see the big rewards. Okay, but there's the rule of 72. 
If you collect 10% every year, 72 divided by 10%, 7.2, that's when your money will double. Okay. So, um, well, how do you invest to get 10%? You're not going to get that at the bank. You won't even get that at a CD. So you have to invest that money. And a lot of people think you have to be a millionaire or you have to have tens of thousands of dollars to invest in the stock market. That couldn't be further from the truth. What if I told you you could get into the stock market with as little as $500? How about $100? Okay. What I did, I got an account with Schwab. And I did a screener, a research screener of mutual funds. And I put certain you know, ingredients, whatever you want to call it, uh, into the screening. One of them was a minimum uh, deposit, a minimum investment, I should say. And it's $100. So for $100, you could get into X number of mutual funds. Now, there's thousands of them out there, but I wanted to, to, to compress it. I wanted to make sure that it had a good Morningstar Rating. Morningstar is a rating service uh, that does that. So I, I said four or five stars. I don't want one, two or three stars. I want good ratings. I want an average return of 10 plus percent. And it's over a longer period of time, because if, you, if, you, if it's one or two years, you may get lucky. But it's five to 10 years. OK, now we have a pattern. It, it looks like this fund is pretty consistent. I didn't want a front load fund, meaning you have to pay the mutual fund company not only the $100 investment, but more money to get into the fund. OK, so it's no front load and there's no 12B1 fees, which are marketing uh, and distribution fees that they would tack on to manage it. OK, now there are fees for them to manage this fund once you're in it, which is common in the industry, and it's typically one to one and a half percent. Okay, if it's any more than one and a half percent, I would not recommend that. That's getting a little expensive. So I'm going to change screens here, and I'm going to show you what I got from Schwab, and you'll see here. Here are six. Funds. That's the ticker symbol. You can look them up and then just see what their returns are. This is the description. See here, 12B1 fees, zero. Okay, there's no fees on the front load. And this is average return over 10 years. Look at these. Nothing under 10%. Okay, Morningstar for 10 years, all five stars. Minimum investment, $100. Okay, and this is the communication service sector. I think there were some other ones in there, maybe utilities, but, you know, this is the one that had the most. So I, I don't know what these percentages mean, uh, maybe how much uh, they contribute to the communication services. I, I don't know. OK, so we've got a handful of these that you could set up with Schwab and start contributing and, you know, make that 10 plus percent over the long haul. OK, so before I go any further, there's always going to be a naysayer out there. What about a crash? What about a stock market crash? OK, I can tell you, you can you can Google this. You can you can look at it. In fact, you can do this now with your phone. Talking to your phone, say, what is the S&P 500 index return the last 45 years? I think it's 10.9%, okay? Even when there's a crash, if you remember during 2008, during President Bush, the housing crisis crash, in three years, we were back to an all-time high, okay? The dot-com bust, within three years, we were, we were back up to an all-time high, okay? So even the Great Depression, 
I think it took four or five years. But when you think long term, capitalism will always win out over governments. OK, government has T-bills, uh, treasury notes and, tre and treasury bonds. They're, they're lower paying. OK, the S&P will always outperform. And I said Google or, or research 45 years. Why did I choose 45 years? Because someone coming out of college is a, probably 22 years old, maybe 23. Add 45 years, that puts them to age 67 or 68. They can start collecting Social Security with more than the minimum benefits. OK, if you wait till age 70, that's those are the best benefits. OK, um, 62, um, you're, it's early Social Security. I wouldn't recommend it. Maybe it, it fits for some people. But anyway, that's why I chose 45. So I'm going to change screens again. And we're going to look at my Excel spreadsheet. And again, I'm going to be more than happy to show this to people or just I'll, I'll email it to you. I can't put it in the YouTube for whatever reason they don't do that. So just email me and I'll try to send it to you. But once I pull it up here, I'll explain it to you and we'll see the power of compounding interest. OK, so let's say we start with a five hundred dollar initial deposit. And you put in right there five dollars a day. Now, I'm going to be a little firm here. You can find five dollars a day. OK, we just spoke about restaurants. If you're going out to the restaurants two, three, four times a week, cut it one of them out and you'll save that twenty five dollars a week because five dollars a day. Monday through Friday, I'm not counting weekends. Times 52 weeks a year, that's thirteen hundred dollars a year. OK, so the five hundred plus the thirteen hundred is eighteen hundred dollars, a 10 percent return, not the 13, 14, 50 percent that we saw on those mutual funds. At the end of year one, you got nineteen eighty. OK, so then each year we're adding thirteen hundred. And it's it's starting to compound. OK, so at the end, of, let's see, year 10. We're up to twenty four thousand dollars. Now, that may not be enough for a down payment for someone with a house. And and honestly, 10 years is kind of long uh, to be for someone. But, you know, it's a start. What if you do ten dollars a day? OK, so but I'm not thinking thinking so much for the home. It, it could be an avenue for you down the road. Maybe you have a kid in high school and you want to get him into this program. He's 18 years old. Um, but watch when we go further down. By year 22, you got over $100,000 just for $5 a day. So the, the person's probably at this point 44 or 45 years old if they started at age 22. OK, I'm going to go to year 45. So they're 67, 68 years old. They got over a million dollars. OK, that's the power of compounding interest. And what I love about this, I didn't change this daily amount. Do you think when someone is 30 years old, they could probably afford maybe ten dollars a day? seven dollars a day whatever it may be i hope that this shows that with a little deposit and if you've got time and i'm not saying 45 years for everybody you know maybe you're 35 years old and you've got 35 years left until you want to start you know stop working most people are using 70 as a gauge now um let's say you've got 35 years Look at that. You still have forty four hundred thousand dollars. And then you could take 10 percent of that. That's 40 grand a year added to your Social Security. OK, so that's all I had. I, I just wanted to show the visual 
and the power that compounding interest has. Um, if you wanted to get a copy of this, again, just let me know. I'd be more than happy to send it to you. And um, if you have any questions, uh, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help you. So once again, uh, this is the, the Lone Wolf podcast uh, on my YouTube channel. And, and hopefully, folks, on my podcast, because it's, it's not a visual, I, I made some sense to you. Uh, if not, again, uh, just check out my YouTube channel and you, and you can see the charts uh, with the numbers. All right, folks. Uh, again, 727-366-5722. Uh, that's my phone number. And I kept it under 30 minutes. Uh, and we'll take it from there. I'll see you next time or I'll be lis listening next time. Take care, folks.